Hello guys, HD here and welcome back to another video and I thought that in today's video we would do something a little bit different. Now a few days ago I remembered that I've got a phone that can record 8K video. Now it might not be the best 8K video but it still is 8K video. I'll put the exact dimensions of the video it can produce on the screen now. So yesterday I went out with my phone in 8K mode and shot a few different clips and today we are going to try and edit it on this computer. This is a mid-2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's just the baseline one with the 2.2 gigahertz Core i7. I believe it's the 4770HQ. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and the one and a half gigabyte Iris Pro graphics and the SSD is just a standard 256 gigabyte one. So what I've done is I of course went out and filmed a few clips. I've got them on my desktop in this folder just there and we are going to go into Final Cut Pro and see if this computer can edit 8K. Now you've got to bear in mind this is a six year old machine and these are 8K files but before we try and edit them let's just see if the computer can play them back. I've done absolutely no prior research so this will be my first time seeing. So let's open one of these and see if it will play. Okay, it's playing, but it seems to be playing more like a slideshow than a video. This should be 24 frames per second. That is more like one frame per second. So technically we can play it back, however, not smoothly. So if it's struggling to play it back, how will it cope with editing it? I'm not too sure. So I'm not really sure what else to do about this. It can at least open the files, which is a good thing, but when it comes to editing, who knows? So what I'm now going to do is open up Final Cut. I'll get a closer shot for you, and then we'll get started. So I have made a new library called 8K Video Test. Apologies, my cat is just going along the side of my desk. Yes, again, I still only have the trial on this machine, but that is not a problem. So I'm going to go up to new, create a new project. We are going to call this 8K video test. We are going to change the video to 8K. Now the actual resolution that we need, I'm not exactly sure of. So we need to change it to 7680 by 4320 and my phone films at 24p. We'll put that down. Now rendering, we will just use ProRes 422 and the audio will be fine just as it is. So let's now click OK and that has now made our new project. So let's Command I and bring in all of our files. I will copy them all to the library just to make it a bit easier. Now they will just bring themselves in. They are now in and I'm simply just going to drag them all onto the timeline just like that and the audio has put itself at the end. What I will do is I'll just put the audio underneath like that and I'll actually turn the volume off from all of the standard clips. So we do that over here, volume off, they are now all silent and at the end there I will just cut the audio and fade it out. I'll also fade that in as well. So this is all the basic clips in the timeline now scrubbing that's not really showing up if I go quickly that is just showing pictures 4k on this machine it scrubs perfectly fine very smoothly this you do have to wait so let's before I add any effects or anything like that let's just play so that is my cat that's actually playing a bit smoother than I thought it would there's not much of a playback difference between in Final Cut and just in QuickTime. I can hear the fans are getting a bit quicker, so it is probably getting a little bit hot, but that's not too much of a problem. What I'm going to do is just have a bit of a mess around, add a few transitions and a couple of overlays. I'll speed all that up and I'll come back once that's done. However, first, what I will do 
is just talk about the options up here. So we've got quality on better performance. I think that is probably the best option to have it on. Media playback, I've got on optimized slash original. That's how I will keep it. Now, background rendering is on. So while it is rendering, it'll probably be a bit laggy, but once it has rendered, it will probably be smooth. I'm going to leave that on just because that's the way most people have it so when I put some text on it will have to take some time to render that so yeah that's pretty much all I need to talk about I'm now just going to add some transitions I'll speed all this up so you don't have to sit through it all okay and I've come back I'm not done yet but I'm just about to add a custom 3D title. So I'm just going to add this in now and we'll see if it can manage to play it back. I'll just call it video test. Let's go off that. Let's try and play that. Mm, yeah, so it does need time to render it. If we go up here, we can see it is now starting to render. So I guess once this has rendered that bit, will be smooth but I'm not going to wait for it to do that that's just a waste of time so I will move on keep adding bits and then we will come back once I've done a little bit more okay so I've just added an effect called bad tv to one of the clips that's quite a heavy effect to put on as you can see it is struggling there to do that but it is actually displaying I'm actually going to add that same effect onto the next clip as well just so we've got some more of that to see and actually the fact that it's showing that at all is actually quite impressive so yeah that actually doesn't look too bad of course it's not running at full speed but I wouldn't really expect it to I'm going to add maybe another text layer further along and then we will just see how this has gone. Okay, so I've just added some more text and it's got a nice effect on it. And that actually loaded up quite nicely. It didn't even need any time to render, which is pretty cool. The last thing I think I'm going to do is overlay one of the clips. I will just put it above Above another one just like that and I will make it smaller just so we can see the other clip playing back too. I'll just pop it up in the corner like that. Let's now try and play back that. Now that is a, a clip with an effect with an overlaid 8K clip on top. That isn't smooth but it is managing to play it. So I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do to this. I'll turn up the volume to see if the audio is playing. The audio seems to be playing just fine. This is a track out of the YouTube audio library. I'll put the title on the screen. Even though the video is not playing particularly smoothly, the audio is, which is pretty nice. But I don't actually know if it's synchronized or not. So in the final export, the sound might not be lined up in the way it is now. We got a bit of a beach ball there, but that soon went away. Let's go up and see what it's doing in terms of rendering. It's currently at 5%. That's actually going up quite quickly. While that is doing that, let's just try and play back the entire thing. I'll make it full screen, so let's just have a look. Okay, so this is practically just a slideshow trying to play back. That is abysmal. I don't think you could really use this to edit something proper. It is kind of just showing pictures. That's actually doing quite well, that effect. Well, at least it was. Yeah, I think that's enough of that. I'm not going to... Oh dear, video frames were dropped during playback. I can indeed tell that. Now if we let this finish doing its background rendering it will probably run a bit smoother so I am now just going to wait a couple of minutes 
for this to stop. Okay, so that only took about two minutes and it had actually said it had finished rendering but it's actually started up again so I guess it's doing it one effect at a time and my computer is lagging. It's not moving the cursor when I'm telling it to, there is definitely a delay. So yeah, that's not as smooth as it was. So I'm guessing it's rendered one of the effects, so let's just try watching the bit which I guess it has done. Yep, that effect and transition was smoother, but the rest of the video still isn't particularly smooth. I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bother letting it carry on doing that rendering. We're just going to go straight and get the video file. So what I'm going to do is do a master file, 8K video test, that's absolutely fine. 7680 by 4320, 24 frames per second, 1 minute 13 seconds, and this is going to be a 17.4 gigabyte file. That is a lot. All the raw footage was only about a gigabyte, and I've even cut some out, so that is a very big File. In settings here, all that looks to be just fine. So let's now click on to next. Where are we going to save it? Yep, yeah, just save it to the desktop. And now let's see how long this takes. I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to sit through this whole thing. But we need to just keep a look at the sharing. So let's see how long this takes. Alright, so that has now finished and it has opened up the file. What I'm going to do is just close out off Final Cut. That should make the computer run a bit smoother here. And here is the file. I'm not exactly sure how long that took. It wasn't too long, but I wasn't keeping track. I'll have to put a timer on in editing, so I will only know when I edit this. But it wasn't too long, which I think is pretty good. Let's make this full screen and see if this plays back okay. And there we go, that actually played back pretty well. It was a lot smoother than the original file. So this is a this is a .mov file. Let's see what the original clips were. These are MP4. So it looks like this computer likes playing back .movs better than MP4s at this resolution. Let's take a look at get info just to make sure it did export correctly. 14.7 gigabytes so it is a bit less than it thought and there we go the resolution is right and it did use ProRes 422 so that is indeed all right. So I think all I need to now talk about is whether editing 8K on one of these machines is any good. So it did work the final file play is absolutely fine. 
very smoothly. Would I recommend editing 8K on a machine like this? No. When you start to add effects, it does just become like a slideshow. Even without effects, it's not a smooth experience. There's dropped frames absolutely everywhere. So no, I wouldn't recommend editing 8K on one of these machines, but if you really had to, you can do it. It's not going to be a good experience, but you can actually do it. Now, I don't think I'm ever going to record an 8K video again using my phone. There's just no real point. 4K is perfectly fine and this computer can edit 4K just as smoothly as I want it to in Final Cut. So, there's no reason for me to edit 8K, so there's no real reason for me to upgrade to a more powerful computer. 4K will be fine for a good few years, especially for what I'm doing. So I think that will be it for this video. You can edit 8K, should you? Probably not. You should probably have a more powerful computer if you want to do this, but you can do if you're patient and can put up with all the dropped frames. So that is now it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was interesting in some way, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.